Good morning, my fellow yoga travelers. I'm mighty glad to be alive today, and I hope that you are too, as we continue to live, laugh, love, learn, linger, and live the life we love. Well, from the affirmation point of view, it's hard to think about feeling good when we know there's so many things going on in the world that are so horrific for people, and we may not feel it immediately, but we know that it's going on. And yet, the truth is that when you're feeling good, all that you really are flows through you. And if it's possible for us to create that which we believe, allow, and expect to be, then it's only by having your thoughts that are powerful, passionate, and positive, that clarity from your own inner being is going to launch and propel you forward and align you with all those people who are in tune with your deepest spiritual intent. So, I believe this is the way to attract to yourself all things needful, both materially and spiritually. That's what's going to make up your vision. And of course, when you feel good, you'll be uplifted. And believe it or not, you'll have fun along the way. Now, philosopher Alan Watts says that what we do and what happens to us is one and the same thing. That we are so interactive with the universe, an organism that goes with its environment, that what happens to me and what I do are one and the same thing. Sometimes it's hard for us to realize this because when we want things, when we say we desire things, we're also saying that we lack things. And of course, there's another point of view from which we don't lack anything. Everything is there for us to interact with and give us the, the best survival advantage possible. Now, this is something you have to do for yourself. No one's going to bail you out. No one else can find this out for you. You have to find this out for yourself. So the first thing I would say is once you realize how intimately connected to everybody else, be careful in terms of your praise and your blame, especially your blame, especially gossiping, backbiting, throwing shadow on other people, fault-finding. Because if you do that, you're still doing it to yourself because you don't realize how intimately connected you are to the other. That's right. To be means to be related. You can't experience yourself without experiencing the other. Now, this is a colossal gamble to take, just like getting married. You know, There's an open-ended aspect of it where you don't know where to lead, but you're going to trust, and you're going to give it your best to do your part to make it work. At the same time, you have to realize so many things are happening outside of your control. The ego has as much control over outside things as a child sitting in daddy's car has behind their own plastic wheel. Yes, there are some things where agency is necessary and it seems like if you don't do it, it ain't going to happen. I get it. But when it comes to other things like the weather or politics or how somebody else thinks or feels, you can't control that. And it's a strange paradox between the part of you that thinks you can do it all by yourself and pull yourself up by your own bootstraps and try to produce something that you can't versus the idea of accepting grace, which means being open, receptive. And at the same time, there's a kind of effort that you have to make at the same time. Very paradoxical, isn't it? But they say paradox is a truth standing on its head trying to get your attention. So why do you do anything? Well, I'm a believer that first chakra, self-preservation, selfish motivation is the stalwart kinship of all humanity, says Yogananda. So you do anything because you think it's for your own good. And before you have genuine love, first you have self-love. Let's admit it. You love you. I love me. And out of that grows the selfishness where I'm out for number one. And that's what we have to overcome. Don't deny it, recognize it, and yet move beyond it so you have other motivations. And that is why in yoga, you have to have a dialogue with your teacher about this to understand how you go from ignorance to knowledge, avidya to vidya. So if you do that, and you work the affirmations, and you keep your heart open to deal with the suffering out of compassion, well, what happens in the end, ultimately, will be the mystic way, a perpetual, 
uncalculated life in the present filled with gratitude and appreciation for the gift of being here at all.